Charles, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, buddy? The very best. Now, yourself and the rest of Lady A, you're going to be heading our way again very soon. You're going to be headlining for what will be, I mean, I can't believe it. I don't know about you. The third time you're headlining C2C in Dublin, London and Glasgow. It's also going to be the 10th anniversary of the festival overall. So for a lot of reasons, it's just going to be one big weekend celebration of country music, right? I mean, you guys must be buzzing. Oh, man, we're excited. We uh, we did some rehearsing, you know, a couple weeks ago and, you know, even tried out the kind of a similar set uh, that we're going to do in a in a show here in the States and just excited, man. I, you know, I think there's a lot of freedom when we go, you know, over to UK and overseas, you know, to try some different songs that we don't always do here in the States. I said it before, you know, in the States, everything is so radio driven that, the fans really want to hear like the radio hits. And when we go over, you know, overseas, it seems like they want to hear their favorite songs off of each record, which, which is really gratifying for, you know, a songwriter and some of our favorite songs, you know, weren't radio singles. So just to be able to tweak our set list and, and really take everyone through a journey of kind of the history of the band, you know, and, you know, all our, uh, gosh, I don't know, eight records, maybe something like that. Eight or nine, I can't remember exactly, <laughs> but it's going to be fun. See, that's good to hear because that's what I was going to ask you. Obviously, with the Request Line Tour, you set up a phone line last year where fans could call yeah. in and suggest songs that they wanted to see you guys perform live. And it's mm-hmm. great to hear you're going to be sort of implementing that into the set in the UK yeah. and Ireland and not just the radio hits. Can I suggest one, Lie With Me? Oh, I love that one. Gosh, I've got a uh, a list of like the ones that got away, songs that like I wish we had put out singles that for some reason we didn't. And Lie With Me is in there. It ain't pretty's in there. Somebody else's heart, but yeah, lie with me is. Oh gosh, we should have put that out as a single. I don't know why we did. No, last week you posted a photograph of yourself and the band along with one of our greatest Northern Irish musical exports, a guy who's <laughs> originally from a place about twenty minutes from where I am at the minute, Bangor, Foy Vance. So I yeah. have to ask you, you know, is there new music coming? What have you been up to with him? Yeah, we just been writing a lot. Um, he was, you know, a, a writer that we wanted to write with for a while. And so we wrote a great song with him. And um, we're about to go into the studio and just start cutting some new stuff and, you know, just kind of piece it together and start, you know, kind of coming up with a plan of how we want to release it. And, you know, I feel like everything is, you know, the way music can be released now is, is so much more immediate. And, you know, the kind of the rule book is thrown out the door right now as far as whether it's an album or not. So, we'll just start wrapping our heads around whether we just want to release music as it comes in or mm-hmm. an album. I, I'm not sure if we've, you know, if we know exactly, but man, we've been writing um, a lot of great stuff. It seems like, and you know, a lot of new, uh, a new life experiences to to pull from that we've been writing about and um, just excited to get back in there. You know, I think we've had some good time off and away from the studio that it kind of gets you itching to get back in. No, you recorded a song with, electronic dance trio cheat codes something's yeah. coming and that's on their recent album one night in nashville i mean it's not the most obvious parents so how did that happen you know we, we heard that they were um you know looking at different country artists and i said well you know let's 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 talk songs you know and um this was a song that kind of came out that just man it just felt like us you know i think i'm sure the idea had kind of sparked from them you know we had done a song with um audion uh before and uh that had some success um and so i'm sure that they you know kind of were like man they're kind of open to that kind of idea and uh, i know a lot of our friends like russell dickerson and little big town were also working with chico's and it just sounded like a cool opportunity you know we've always been a band i think that's you know kind of had our tentacles into some different genres throughout our career and um and some crossover hits of course of need you now and and just a kiss that i think it You know, it's kind of fun to be able to, I think, stretch our influences a little bit, you know, and try something different. I'm not I'm I can't say that I'm the biggest electronic music fan, but I thought that song really fit us a lot. And my little seven year old boy, that's all he listens to. His favorite artist is Marshmello. So he's always like it's so funny. I have found out about all these electronic uh, groups from my, my little son. That's so funny. But I was going to ask you about that because I've been loving watching him develop his DJ skills. Mm-hmm. And for such a young kid, he's actually, yeah. I mean, I go out and DJ and he kicks my ass. So um, <laughs> it's good to hear he's keeping up with it. Yeah. Yeah. He's having fun. I mean, he just, you know, he's a really intelligent little kid and cute and whatever he's into. I just told him just to, you know, this is the time to just explore. You know, he's, 
he went to a little bit of a sports phase for a while and and but music has been one thing that he he gets really enamored with you know he's he kind of figures it out on his own because i have to admit i you know i told him i was like i wish uh you know i said i wish i knew as much as as my bandmate dave does when it comes to you know pro tools and being able to produce stuff and um my son's got all these questions and I'm like, man, we're going to have to call up uncle Dave. I don't know the answer to this, but, but he just gets on his little iPad and explores and figures it all out. And I'm just, you know, it's really fun to watch a little kid's mind. Wow. So you rounded out 2022 by releasing this very emotional song as far as you could. And, you know, brutally honest and, there's not many songs that deal with the subject matter, but manage to mm-hmm. find a way to end on an inspirational high. Yeah. Um, you obviously wrote the song with Dave from Lady A and Jimmy Robbins. What I've wanted to know, because I really do genuinely love the song, the day it came to writing it, was it like pulling teeth? Did you go places you didn't want to go? Or was it a case of you almost opened the floodgates and just everything came pouring out? Yeah, it was, it was actually really, really easy and therapeutic. We had, we had started writing another song that morning, something kind of fun and light. And I was like, man, I'm just not feeling this. I said, you know, I was like, I've got this, this line I wrote down. I wrote a goodbye letter to alcohol when I did some work on myself, you know, and, and I said, uh, you know, I had this line in there that I really liked, you know, and I was like, you took me as far as you could take me. And, and so, um, you know, and I was telling the guys, I said, I've, I've been wanting to write a song without it sounding preachy or, you know, but something that kind of tells my story. And, um, and I said, you know, because alcohol, I said, obviously, I don't love where it took me. But I said in the beginning, I said it did serve me well in certain things. I said it gave me the courage to move to Nashville. I said, you know, I w- probably wouldn't have walked up to my wife that night if I hadn't uh, had a little liquid courage in me. Probably wouldn't have walked up to Hillary. All these different things that, you know, I don't know, I don't regret. And um, and it's so funny. Jimmy is just such a good songwriter and he just picked up the guitar and he goes, that's why I moved in Nashville. That's why I almost left. And we were just off to the races, you know, and I don't know. It was a very special moment, especially between Dave and I, cause you know, he's seen all the ups and downs of it. And um, he was just tearing up and it was one of those kind of good little, you know, close buddy moments, the little therapy session in our, in our own little way, you know, it crossed my mind. I'm sure it's crossed yours, particularly with country music. It's very rare that you hear a song that's speaking the truth about alcohol. You know, with country, it's like you're happy, have a drink. You're sad, have a drink. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know, and there's nothing wrong with that, too. You know, I think that's what I always tell everybody. I was like, I'm still going to sing the songs like Bartender and, you know, Quarter After One. I'm a little drunk, you know, like it's a part of my life. And it's, you know, and just for me personally, it just, you know, I, I couldn't have one without wanting 10 of them, you know, and. So, you know, I don't want it to be like anything where someone feels uncomfortable, you know, or, you know, feels like I can't sing about that anymore. I've got some buddies, some other buddies that are songwriters that are sober. They said, I've, I've written some of the best drinking songs <laughs> sober. Um, but no, for me, I mean, it definitely just, it had gotten to a point where it just wasn't serving me anymore, man. And, um, and, you know, about eight months into it now, and, you know, there's definitely some tough moments here, like cocktail parties are hard, but. You know, what I've gained from it is so much better. I'm the healthiest I've been in forever. And the band, just everything just seems like, all right, this is kind of a new adventure. That's kind of what I'm treating it like. You know, I lived one way for so long that it's kind of nice to walk through this life a little clearer and a little more direction and try to figure out what it's all about for me. Not just about having a good time, but about, you know, trying to actually leave a mark and be a good dad, be a good husband, all that good stuff. It has been remarkable all over the world because it's not always the case with, you know, celebrities, musicians, mm-hmm. actors, athletes. The outpouring of love and support all over the world that's come your way. You know, people are with you. That's been really, really humbling. I didn't I didn't quite expect I, I don't think I expected how many people to uh, connect to the to the story and the journey as much. You know, it's not necessarily someone that in that is an active addiction, but it's a lot of times it's family members that are dealing with it or somebody else. And you know, just to feel that support, but also to feel like I can help, you know, kind of maybe uh, share my experience a little bit with them. I think that's the best way that I've found to approach it is just share what I've been through and, you know, kind of maybe some of the signs as opposed to saying, well, okay, you need to quit. You need to do this, you know? So, uh, you know, I felt like I've definitely had several people I've been able to kind of personally kind of talk to about this, which has been been gratifying in a way because, 
you know, you know, you want to come out of this and have something positive come from it, you know, and, you know, there's definitely that side of me that doesn't want this thing to beat me, you know, and I, I want something good to come out of it. So, um, so yeah, it's in, in a weird way, it's been kind of a blessing for me, you know, it just feels like my eyes have been kind of open to, to a lot more of what this life's about, you know? Yeah, for sure. Listen, Charles, I mean, you're looking a million bucks. I think every time you lose a bit of weight, I'm putting it on, but, um, <laughs> You're looking great. You've never sounded better, you know, and the band just seemed completely re-energized and just so yeah. focused on, you know, looking forward to the future. And obviously you get such the best reception in Ireland. We can't wait to have you back on stage and uh, March 10th, C2C Dublin. And uh, always a pleasure just to spend some time with you. And again, I know your wife has just celebrated a birthday, so yeah. give her my best, you know. I will. I will. We just actually drove back in. We, we went and uh, had a little get a weekend getaway at, at this little farm area and got massages and did all that good stuff ate too much food but it was so good wow i saw you were in barbados with dave stewart very jealous oh yeah yeah in bahamas yeah we were oh yes doing, got to meet i actually got to meet uh bono while i was there that was kind of crazy oh my God. yeah so speaking of uh speaking of dublin it was pretty wild man like dave stewart's like oh we're just gonna stop over here and say hey to a buddy real quick and i walked up and i was like holy sh like, is that bono <laughs> And uh, I, I played it cool, but it was it was pretty bizarre, man. It was awesome. I know you've got a load of these to do, so I'll get off the line. But listen, if you happen to do lie with me in Dublin and you hear like a girly scream somewhere, that's me. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Cheers, Stuart. Charles. All the best, man. Appreciate it, buddy.